Widen them butt cheeks, big boys, because the new Mulligan rule has come to Magic Online, and it shall have a massive impact. We're talking incontinence for days, and if you still don't know how the new London Mulligan rule works, fret not my big boys, because here's how it works. Let's say we're not happy with our seven cards. We can Mulligan. But wait a minute, we drew seven cards even though we Mulligan. That's right, and let's say we keep this hand. Because we took one Mulligan, we have to put one of these cards on the bottom of our library, and then we're ready to start. Now let's start over. Again, we start with seven cards in hand. Let's mull. But let's say we don't like this hand either. We can mull again and see we're still drawing seven cards. We can mull again. The third mulligan, fourth mulligan, fifth mulligan, and let's say we keep this one. Because we took five mulligans, we have to put five cards on the bottom of our library. One, two, three, you get the idea. So first of all, it makes combo decks really good because you just keep filtering through your deck until you have the right cards. But then you might be thinking, wait a minute, aren't there some modern cards out there that were never intended to be used with this new rule? And the answer is yeah. First of all, the ley lines, if you have the ley lines in hand when you start, they come out. But if you just keep mulling and looking at seven cards, each time you just keep the ley line in hand bottom the cards from the mulligan and you start with ley lines so when the ley lines are printed were they intended to do that i don't think so but here's where the plot thickens what about the card semen powder it says anytime you can mulligan and semen powder is in your hand you may exile the cards from your hand then draw that many cards but with the new rule that's very very confusing so let's see it in action here's our opening hand but we don't like it so we mull and we mull this as well but oh wait we have a semen powder so we can choose to use that for a free mulligan we still have to bottom two but since this will exile our hand let's say we don't want to exile Exile Gorio. We can bottom the cards we still need, send everything else into exile, and then continue to mull. So that should be how the rule works, I believe. It's very confusing, but to make matters worse, I will demonstrate extra confusion. There seems to be an issue when we have a semen powder in our opening hand. So let's use the ability to draw seven more cards, but for some reason, it gives us an option to powder again. Sending all those cards into exile, but it keeps giving us the option to use semen powder. So powder again. But it, or, none of, there weren't any more powder, so it's powder again. It just keeps going. And it seems to be a bug, and it happens in real matches as well, like paid matches this happens where it just lets you take free mulligans over and over again so i tried to contact support via live chat to tell them about this issue but guess what they seem to have removed the live chat feature so i can't report it directly they're gonna make me file this whole paper thing where they ask you to create an account that's separate from your magic online account and just like what and the live chat's been there since the beginning like why, why, why get rid of it but bugs aside semen powder is pretty cray cray so cray cray that i built a deck around it exploiting all of its goodness so here's how it works the deck centers around gorio's vengeance either hitting grizzlebrand or emrakul while in graveyard normally most Gorio's decks have through the breach in it. But with the new mulligan rule, maybe we don't need it. Because if you just keep mulliganing, why not just go for the Gorio? And because we're trying to get things in graveyard, we have four faithless looting, which honestly should have been banned before this even happened. Because oh, okay, because if you can keep mulliganing for extra cards, filter through that, and then use faithless looting to filter even more, it's like how much filtering do you really need? A bit overpowered. So we can use that to get things in graveyard. But now's where things get grande. Because semen powder is exiling stuff from our hand, we can combo it with this card here that a lot of people just don't know about. It says put turret card from exile into graveyard. So let's say we exile like a grizzle brand with semen powder we can then return it from exile into graveyard allowing us to hit it with gorio on top of semen powder we also have four gemstone caverns if we're on the draw and it's in our opening hand we can exile a card from our hand so we can exile like a grizzle brand or emrakul and then use pull from eternity on it it's pretty good but on top of that we have spoils of the vault we choose a card name reveal cards from top of our deck until we hit that card we put that card in hand but we lose life equals the number of cards revealed but the key thing to this card is that all those cards revealed they go into exile so we can use pull from eternity on it it's a pretty crazy card when you think about it. And since we're trying to fire Gorio as soon as possible, who cares about lands? Let's put in lands that make any color. So like City of Ass and Mana Confluence. And my favorite, Forbidden Orchard. When we tap it, our opponent gets a creature. You think that would be bad for us, but we have four Lightning Axe. Deals five damage to target creature. We have to discard a card though to play it, which is actually why we're using it because we want to discard one of these guys. And normally the issue is that our opponent might not have any creatures for us to target, but with Orchard, we can give them a creature, target that creature with the Lightning Axe, and then it works. We also have Fury of the Horde. It's a very super aggressive card with Grizzlebrand because with Grizzlebrand's ability to draw seven cards, we can draw on the Fury of the Horde. It gives us another combat after that combat. And we just keep going more and more combats to finish off the game. And we can also use Nox's Revival to get it back. And it's also saving us to do crazy stuff too. But now on the sideboard. It's probably the smallest sideboard you've ever seen. It's just four cards. Both a new mulligan rule. Who cares? Because we have Ley Lines. That's all you need anymore. Ley Line of Sanctity makes it so we can't be targeted. So we can't get discarded. Ley Line of the Void gets rid of our opponent's graveyard. And Maseju makes it so our Gorio's Vengeance can't get countered. And it's also four Thought Seasons to try and take out the graveyard hate stuff. But let's say in game two, they do find a way to exile our graveyard with our creatures in it we can still get them back with pull from eternity so a lot of exploits in this deck probably more than what modern should allow but hey i don't make the rules i just exploit them so let's get to that gameplay be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this and without further ado here's the gameplay and i hope you enjoy opening hand we have goria but nothing else so we're gonna mull it spoils the vault that would be pretty gangster yeah we even have that so we'll keep a play that and wait a minute i just realized we can exile this big boy and if we can hit a third land we can do boom graveyard hit boom and it looks like we're up against amulet 
heal it. Meh. No third land. But we can spoil the vault for a land. Oh, it plays that land. Playing Azusa. She thick. Ancient stirring. Visions. Kind of passes back. We can use this now. Do we use it though? I mean, it's really risky. Nah, I'll just risk it. And that's kind of what this deck's all about. Naming city. A brass. Ooh, not bad. Not bad. Okay, then. Let's go. Pull from eternity. Oh, snaps me. Exile the Grizzle as well. Oh, let's go with that. And now we go Gorio. Draw seven cards. Draw seven cards. Swing for seven. Draw seven cards. And oh, look, we can play this. Exiling that and that. So now we're going to attack for a seven again. Opponent takes a seven. Draw seven cards. And we can almost pull it off because we can do that. Put this on top of our deck. Use Simeon to draw cards. Wait, why wouldn't that work? Wait, that does work. Oh, well, that's cool. All right. Sometimes I'm a little slow in the head. So Faith is looting, discarding that. And oh, goody. We play another one and we attack again for seven. That's some magic at its finest. Oh, so crazy. So go on in the game too. I'm bringing four thought seasons and done with three seeming visions and one lightning axe. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, we have a thought season, a Gorio. So let's keep it. Just kidding. We have the new Mulligan Rolls as Mole. And this also looks pretty good. We can turn one discard ourselves. Now let's just keep it. Dumping Emrakul. Oh, plays the land. Oh, this is so tempting. We can thought seize them because they have to have graveyard hate, right? As an alternative, we could thought seize ourselves and then next turn go Gorio into Grizzle, but I doubt we'll be able to get away with that. So let's just go thought seize. Interesting, interesting. And negate, but no blue. They have path to exile. Oh man. And a bog. This shall be tricky. We'll take the path and pass back. Ammo of Vigor. Playing the bog. Playing for one and passing back. That's not what we wanted. But oh well, pass back. Uh oh, SpaghettiOs. They bounce the bog. Mm, they can do negate as well. But oh well, let's see if we can get away with it. Wells of the Vault. Naming. Faithless looting. We get it. But the question is, will they counter it? Not that we can really do it this turn anyway. So let's try and bait the bog out of them. Ooh, yes, yes. That's exactly what I wanted. Powder. Grizzlebrand. And you'll see what's in the store. You'll see. A very tricky, tricky move. So they play the bog. Let's try and bait them now then. Grab the Gorio. Please negate. If they don't negate, then they're a genius. Oh no, negate? What are we gonna do now? Because our whole graveyard just got exiled. They're they're just too smart for us. Oh, it swings for three. And then back in our turn, let's do this. Pull from attorney on Grizzlebrand. And hey, what do you know? We can now Gorio. <laughs> Nah. Who's the clever one now? <laughs> now we draw seven cards. Uh, uh, uh oh. Wait, draw seven more cards. Oh, thank God. All right. Well, exile those two. We get another combat. Swing for seven. And oh, looky, we can do another combat. Swing for seven. This is the future of magic. Do you feel your nipples getting hard? Because I sure do. Imagine a future where this is the norm. Oh, the excitement. But now on to the next one. Opening hand is not a bad hand, but we have an option to powder, so we will powder. And yes, yes, we can keep this. So the question is, do we faithless looting or spoils? I suppose we'll try the looting. Wow, that was terrible. Okay, dump that and that. And pass back to our opponent. And it looks like it's Tron. And since we have three lands, I think our best option is just go spoils of the vault. At the end of our opponent's turn, then I just go Gorios on our next turn. So one's crying. And do we grab Emrakul? Nah, I'll we'll take the risk. Go, Grizzlebrand. Badoop. All right, it was literally right on top. I find that quite humorous. And now it's big dick baller time. Like my mama always says, discarding that and that. Oh, but here's Gorio. So in for seven. There's only seven damage. Oh, wait, wait. No, it's not. Keep digging. Oh, look. It's one of these. Discarding that and that. So lucky for us, we get another combat. Now we swing for seven. Good thing it's over. Oh, wait. No, it's not over. Oh, and we happen to pull another one. Oh, okay. And that will be lethal. Isn't modern's feature bright? Upon the horizons, I see so many turn one victories. Oh. But now on to game two. Going on to game two. We'll bring in four thought to make sure opponent doesn't finger us too hard and with that let's go to game two opening hand gorio grizzlebrands and emrakul it's pretty good and i would probably keep it if it weren't for the new mulligan rule look at all seven of these glorious cards and wait we can use powder now dumping that could powder again we have gorio we have faithless the pull from attorney can't draw any creatures from this that's not good now nah, we'll just keep it though putting that out exiling that on it goes ancient stirring and back in our turn ate this looting mm, if only this hadn't had black in it we could oh drop the emerald but we can't now that's no fair so i guess we'll dump that and that and now i just need to discard source back to our opponent opponent goes ancient stirrings again grabbing urza's mine playing expedition map come on discarding anything with discard that's not it but with this land here we can make four mana we need five to do this and this on the same turn so we're almost there and back to our opponent opponent grabs the power plant playing chromatic sphere and back on our turn uh, that's not a land but we'll thought sees our opponent oh look at the dirty boy. He think he's so clever, but ooh. 
Not clever enough. Oh, it gets the final Tron land, but what can they do with it? Draws a card. Why is that? Draws another card. Gets another land. Why is Expedition map? And this is it. Can we pull a land? Please, Magic Gods. I've been such a good boy this year. Oh my god. Fine, whatever. I don't even want to win. How's that? Please pass back. Please play something stupid like Ballista. Yes. Okay, good. Grab it, Ulamog. So it's now or never. For real this time. Come on, anything. It could be a land. It could be something that discards. Spoils of the Vault. I mean, yeah, it's kind of good, I guess. So here are our options. We can name Faithless Looting. There's three more in deck. Or we can name Lightning Axe. There are also three more in deck. But we might take a lot of damage from that. So I think we got to name Lightning Axe to try and survive. Because if we drop to four, we're in a lot of trouble. But let's go for it. What the hell? That was a mega queef. How does it even drop our life that low? I feel like a loser now. Well, whatever, game game three. Open hand, we could mole, even though our hand's looking pretty good. Now yeah, let's use powder. And oh look, let's powder again. And yeah, we'll try and keep this, even though we could powder again, because that's how magic works, apparently. But for now, pass back. Exhibition map, full noxious revival. Mm, I don't want to let the opportunity slip away again. I want it passes back. This is not fair. Oh my god. All right. An opponent takes Grizzle Ram, but they should have taken the Goryeo, but I guess as long as they don't know that. Oh, oh, the joy. Oh gosh, do oh, we Emrakul them? Yes, we Emrakul them. Oh, they're taking so long here. They're so confused. That's right, big boy. Be confused. This is the future of magic. Bask in its glory. Oh, you ho. Ah. I don't know how to feel at this point. Oh, but that is quite troublesome. Man, it's just like it, the format doesn't even feel the same anymore. I guess you could argue that the quality plays a little bit better because we're drawing the cards that we want to play and they're drawing the cards they want to play. And both players are just doing it a lot more consistently. So now it's like, of course, they have Graveyard Hate in hand. And for us, it's like, of course, we have the combo in hand. And I guess that's fair. It's just weird. But things are looking pretty interesting. I mean, it'll definitely be an exciting month of seeing how this pans out. Quite interesting indeed. I want to get this video out as soon as possible, so I'm going to cut it there. I know it's a bit short. That's what she said. But in conclusion, Modern about to be cray-cray if they actually go through with this. I mean, part of me wants them to go through with it because the idea of the mulligan rules is that it makes it more skill intensive. They have to be able to recognize a really, really good hand and not just like net deck something. And it would raise the ceiling of skill level because there's so many people at tournaments that have no idea how to play the deck, but they just win because they draw the right cards. But with this rule, there's so much more decision making. Problem is though, there are quite a few questionable cards. For example, like what would you use instead of a ley line? Like, why would you not use ley lines in every deck? So maybe they're planning on banning the ley lines if this rule does stay. Same thing with Serum Powder. This card was not intended to work with this new rule. Like when they printed this card, they weren't like, oh yeah, people will be able to mold a seven every time. And even things like Faith is Looting. If you already get to mold a seven as many times as you want, and you can filter even more on top of that, I don't know, a lot of questionable stuff. This deck here, I don't know, it's a kind of a glass cannon, but I expect to see variations of this deck with Serum Powder, Grizzle Brand, Through the Breach, and overall less all in on Goryeo. But the future modern, it be cray cray. And now there's like so much content to do, right? Because we got to go back through all these old decks and see how do they fare now with the new mulligan rule like how does vengevine fare because with main deck ley lines and the ability to craft our hand better i don't know it looks pretty good so check back soon because i'm planning on putting out a lot of videos but that is all for now and as always i hope you have a great day